Good morning. Welcome one and all visitors and friends to this lovely Sunday morning. The fall the time has has shifting, the weather's shifting, it's lovely to be together in this space. And a uh, special welcome to some visitors from afar that are uh, my parents, Rob and Linda Humphrey, who are joining. Lovely to have you with us at St. Matthias for the first time. And um, a special welcome, if it works, <laughs> to those who are watching online later. We are attempting to record this service for online. It's a work in progress. And just for those in-house to be aware, you are not on camera. It's catching basically the front here of what's happening. And during communion, we'll have a slide that kind of covers so you can enjoy that. We're just present to each other. But for those of us who can't be in the room, we're attempting to make that available. You may have noticed a couple of changes to the sanctuary space this morning when you came in. And that, of course, is that Daniel has moved the pump organ out here. Uh, well, that is true. Um, no, it's Megan is sitting here in a prayer desk for the first time. No, of course, you're seeing the large tent above me here. This is the start of Season of Creation, which is a global and ecumenical celebration, a time of uh, reflection and action on this earth, our common home, and our relationship to its creator. And so we have uh, taken some liberties with our space to try and welcome us into that. And the theme for this year's Season of Creation is a home for all. You'll hear about, hear about that a bit when Megan preaches, but that is the theme. And so um, they take an image from Abraham's tent, and I thought we would uh, enjoy that image with a bit of tent in the space, which we've long wanted to do. So that's what you see around you. Um, a few quick announcements. One, there is a book study for Season of Creation that the diocese is hosting on a lovely book called Resisting Structural Evil. I promise it's more interesting than it sounds. Um, I met the author of this book a few years ago. We were at a conference together, uh, and her heart really is wrestling with how we can be human to one another in a time of climate change, of systemic and social violence, and what resources does the Christian tradition offer? So that's really what the heart of this book is. It's happening on Wednesdays, September 15. The bishop is hosting, and yours truly is leading one of the sessions. So speak to me about that if you're interested. Next uh, Thursday begins our Thursday time of uh, Eucharist communion and discussion group. We're trying to sort of continue uh, that beautiful time we created and shared on Zoom together for those of you that were there in person in a small group setting. So that's starting Thursday the 16th at 10 a.m. So please join us. All are welcome. 10 a.m. here in the church next Thursday and every week following. And perhaps someone would uh, say a word about the chapel gallery show, which is opening. Nikki, are you okay to do that? You can just do that from here. Thank you. Yes, so we're, uh, we're now going into our third year. We've, uh, it's been a very successful ministry so far. Um, we have a very interesting artist who we're showing. We're opening on the 17th. Uh, we're not doing an, a proper opening because of COVID. Uh, we're just going to have a non-social gathering from 6 to 8 um, if people would like to, um, to register for that, to meet the artist. She's an extremely interesting woman. She's been practicing for many, many years. And her work is basically, it's, it's, she works with fiber and organic materials. And it's, so it's kind of, it, it's, it, some of it is sculptural, some of it is more um, painterly. Uh, but it's really interesting work. And her story that goes along with each of these individual pieces is extremely interesting. So she, it's well worth coming by to talk to the artist. We are going to be videoing a conversation for be about half an hour. Um, and that will be shown, uh, we haven't quite figured out where we're going to show it, but as people are waiting, because of course we're still under restrictions, so that we're still limited on our numbers, and as people are waiting to go into the gallery, they'll be able to see the video, and it will be very informative. So I really hope you, co you come along. Um, it's going to be running for three weekends, so it starts on the 17th uh, of September, and it ends on the 3rd of October. So, uh, and we're running uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, with the exception of the 25th, because there are some, um, there's two funerals that are taking place in here. But do come along. I think you'll enjoy. The artist is going to be in the gallery for all of the showings, and uh, she's quite a gem, so please join us. Thank you. 
And lastly, I just want to draw your attention to the image here on the leaflet of the uh, massive sunflower, which is attempting to overgrow Sheila Richards' house, <laughs> um, but planted from the seeds that you may recall were in the Lent and Easter at home kits that we sent out. And so lovely to see this kind of growing fruit of that little seed that was planted when we were all still pretty much locked down and at home. And indeed, I think a window for us, an invitation for us into this season of growth, of celebrating the promise of God's faithful love and presence to us in this time. And it is in that promise that we open ourselves to worship the triune God this morning. In this time and place, we gather with gratitude on the unceded and ancestral lands of the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. We gather in the name of the Redeemer. We gather in the presence of the Life Giver. Come, let us dwell in God's shelter. Come, because the earth is the Lord's. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of unchangeable power, when you fashioned the world, the morning stars sang together and the host of heaven shouted for joy. Open our eyes to the wonders of creation and teach us to see all things for good to the honor and glory of your glorious name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to rise in body or spirit for our opening hymn. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. 
The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Psalm 125. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay. Those who trust in the Lord stand fast forever. Those who oh, are like Messiah, which cannot be moved. <coughs> the hills stand around Jerusalem. So does the Lord stand around about his people. From this time forth, forevermore. So the wicked shall not hold sway over the land, the just, so that they will not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers but peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we prepare our hearts to hear the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him not one thing came into being. 
What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world knew him not. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, And we have seen this glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. O God, set your dwelling once more within our hearts, within our church, within our world. May we know you. May we learn from you as we learn again the names of the plants and animals and places of your inhabitation. Open our ears to hear the leading of your spirit this morning, for we gather in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, I made a last-minute decision to take my kids camping for the night. All the usual campsites were full, as with every other hotel in town. But I found one that uh, Matt might call, instead of camping, glamping, as we only had to show up with our food and water and sleeping bags. And it was in a canvas tent, not unlike what you see above our heads this morning. We settled in and explored the park and watched the evening colors turn to pink and orange and violet and blue as night slowly fell. These canvas tents were placed at the end of a long, wide, dry field. The trees had all been removed and the wind swept without interruption, right into the sides of this tent. The children and I lay awake, and they cuddled against me as we listened and watched the canvas shake and heave over the light wood frame, and the metal fastenings rattle with the echoes of Jacob Marley's ghost from A Christmas Carol. Lying awake all through that night, I was deeply aware of our proximity to a creation that we often close out. 
I realized I didn't even know the sounds of the birds or who they were, or which animals rustled at the edges of our picnic table. I could not tell you which direction the wind was coming from or whether they had the scent of rain on their wings. I realized how far I had come from being an integrated member of this family of creatures and elements and how our fear, our imaginings of ghosts, came mostly from an othering of creation and an ignorance of that natural world that surrounds us. In Genesis 2, God, having formed us from dust and soil, gives us the first task of learning the names of every part of creation. Creating with God the household of God, a common home for all, a home where all would be known and welcomed. As Matt said, we have entered the season of creation. A season where we pay closer attention to our place within God's wide creation. And as you may have seen on our website and other places, the theme this year is Abraham's Tent, a home for all, renewing the oikos of God. I encourage you, if you haven't, to read Beyond Homelessness. It's an amazing and rich book by Stephen Verma Pettiger and Brian Walsh. And in it, they share that the Greek word oikos, eco, means house or household. Thus, ecology is the study of the household. And economics is the law or rule of the household. Therefore, our home planet is our common household, all of us, human and non-human alike, sharing the same house. And our faith, the faith of Abraham and Sarah, begins with an incarnate tent-dwelling God. Pettiger and Walsh continue, Christian faith is a faith that is always placed, rooted, placed in a good creation, placed in time, an incarnational faith, a faith rooted in the one who took flesh in a particular place. And it continues to be a faith of embodied presence, which declares to this world this blue-green planet so battered and bruised, yet lovely, as our home. This God is a primordial homemaker, and creation is a home for all creatures. This is a God with perpetually dirty fingernails, a God who is always playing in the mud. And humans are called to tend and keep this home, to continue to construct the world as a home in such a way that cares for all creatures and provides a place of secure habitation for all its inhabitants. Abraham and Sarai would have been steeped both in this scriptural memory, but also their very physical experience of being in the land. They would have needed to know the land intimately for their families and their herds to survive. And this intimacy would have grounded their experience of God, not as separate, but as deeply intertwined with all of creation. In the Genesis passage, we hear of the oaks, the trees of Mamre, offering the family and the herds that much-needed shade in the heat of the desert. And the hospitality of these trees is then passed on by Abraham and Sarah, who share it with these divine strangers that appear in the heat of the day. Sarah and Abraham were part of a semi-nomadic community, and the, in the absence of what we now know as our hospitality industry, they would have been responsible for offering that hospitality and welcome to strangers. These could even be former enemies, but the intimate knowledge of the land and its hazards made receiving those who needed hospitality an imperative for living out God's shalom. Though we see this hospitality offered to these unexpected and possibly divine strangers, 
we know our biblical tradition expects that same hospitality to be offered to the land. Shalom includes wolves and lambs, trees and soil, forests and rivers. It has to do with all kinds of creatures living in right relationship. So how do we go back to a hope of living in right relationship with all? When will the homemaking reign of God be realized on earth? I wonder if it takes us humans having the courage to let go of our notions of home and homemaking, of who should be included and who should be kept at a safe distance and have the courage to build, bit by bit, an ancient idea of household and home, where we know the names of our human and non-human companions. And our ecology and our economics are focused on creating a truly healing and inclusive home for all. One of my favorite images that you may have heard me share before in terms of homemaking comes actually from lobsters. Every few months, a lobster has to shed its exoskeleton, its bodily home. And in the process of that shedding, it's actually open to attack. There's no protection. But if that lobster is to grow, it has to let go of that outer protective shell. Because that wonderful protection that has served well for so long will actually become a death trap if it doesn't change. The inner being outgrows the shell and has to push out the shell joint by joint. The eyes then have to pop out of their holes, rendering the lobster blind for the duration of the whole process. Then there is the slow process of wrenching the body out of its old shell, and in that it is exposed and helpless. The pink we see on a lobster is the beginning of a new shell. The outer structure is birthed out of what was there all along. I think we're at an important crossroads in the history of the church. And we've been here before. As in every age, we discern who we are and who we are called to be, not as a social club or as an institution, but as the living, breathing body of Christ in and for this world, not just for some, but for all. We can hold on to our protective shell that has kept us safe, but removed from a dirt under the fingernails kind of God, or join God in re-entering fully the messy, uncertain life as creatures in creation. It may be that we need to be blind for a while. Like the Israelites led out into the wilderness, we might need to learn to be homeless for a while. To be led step by faltering step by people and creatures we had never imagined. To let go of systems that oppress and exclude, that damage creatures and privilege human institutions to find ourselves once more vulnerable and exposed to the elements with only a thin canvas above our heads that lets us feel the heat of the day, the power of the wind and the life and death reality of hospitality given and received, to be reshaped and recreated by the word made flesh who chose to become a creature within creation. Returning to the book I began with, Beyond Homelessness, they ask, when will the image bearers of this homemaking God take up their calling with faithfulness and integrity? When they recognize that the resurrected one is the gardener of the new creation, when they follow Jesus, who manifests this new vision of homemaking rule in the healing of the sick, the casting out of demons, and the restoration of the outcasts, 
those who are ritually, symbolically, and socially unclean, and therefore have been rendered homeless. When they confess this Jesus as Lord, the one who himself was rendered homeless on a Roman cross and resurrected with homemaking power on the third day. When they recognize that this Jesus is the image of the invisible God and that him all creatures are redeemed and humanity is called to be renewed and restored as God's homemaking image bearers, embodying in their lives the homemaking virtues of compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness, and love. When the peace of this Christ rules in their hearts and the word of this Christ dwells in them so richly and so deeply that they begin to shape dwellings of hospitality, justice, and shalom. This September, let us start the difficult process of shedding our skin, returning to our vocation and growing a new understanding of home rooted in the God who drew us from soil and breathed the wind of life into our flesh and who continues to call us to build dwellings for all in God's ecosystem of love, hospitality, and shalom. Amen. Holy One, you created the universe well beyond our ability to imagine. Just as you created the primal spark, you created and love each and every one of us. Even beyond the mystery of the universe, it is sometimes even more difficult to imagine the wonderful and sustaining love you hold for each of us. We come before you to humbly acknowledge the tasks you have given us to love our neighbor as ourselves and to love and nurture the creation you set before us. As our Jewish sisters and brothers begin the high holy days, we too celebrate and rejoice in your creation and enter a time of reflection and consideration of how we might thoughtfully and lovingly join in the work of sustaining your creation. Creator, your people throughout the world love you. From many faith traditions and in many ways, your people and their leaders in faith thank you for your blessings. In this time of uncertainty and stress, we seek your blessing in particular for faith leaders. Uphold and sustain them. Close to us, we pray for Bishop Anna, our clergy team, Megan, Matt, Rob, and Karen, our honorary. We ask especially that you shower your love and comfort on the faith leaders who serve in conditions of danger, hardship, and persecution. God of all creation, hear our prayer. Holy One, the emotions of many societies are stretched and frayed. Grant to all leaders of communities and nations your compassion and guidance. Help them lead with humility, compassion, and justice. In this time of deep stress, health crises, civil unrest, and violence, and natural disaster, bring hope and strength. God of all creation, hear our prayer. Creator, we see your creation under siege from fire, flood, storm, and even from human decisions. As we seek to act responsibly and compassionately, guide us with your wisdom and grace. Keep us mindful of the complexity of your creation and grant us the patience to discern the ways 
of long-lasting decisions while doing whatever we can to mitigate short-term emergencies. God of all creation, hear our prayer. Holy One, your grace brings us many people whose talent and calling is to serve, heal, protect, and nurture your people and our communities. We pray humbly that you hold closely all those in the health, education, and protection services. Please help them withstand any angry or frustrated words or actions that arise. You alone know our deepest hearts and motives. We simply bring our prayer to you. God of all creation. Creator, your wonderful creation is beset with violence and conflict. Bless all who have fled and all who continue to be in danger from violence, persecution, and conflict. Bring your redeeming and sustaining love and compassion to change the hearts of those who inflict or encourage violence and pain. Creator, sustain the hope of refugees, prisoners, and the persecuted in a future of mercy and bring hope to those whose fear and pain may outweigh their hope. God of all creation, hear our prayer. Holy One, you are the source of grace and healing. Bless all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We remember Jerry, Mary, Steve, John, Jane, Jeff and Sheila, Don and Betty. Console those who have suffered the loss of a dear one. Bless and protect all those who are traveling. Dear God, we bring you all those whose needs we carry in our hearts or whose names we mention aloud. God of all creation, hear our Gracious and wonderful creator, despite our worries, despite the troubles we see around us, we know your love is there to sustain and hold us close. We thank you for the beauty of this world, even in its most fragile or powerful moments. Send us forth today and every day, knowing your love gives us the strength to serve and sustain our neighbors and your creation. In gratitude, we send all our prayers to you through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All creation invites us to join our voices in praise to God. Trusting in God's mercy and grace, let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Generous God, you created us and placed us here to care for all of creation. Forgive us for turning away from you and for neglecting the earth. Raise us up and make us again stewards of your creation, that we may see your presence in all that surrounds us. Through Christ we pray, amen. Let us rejoice in the knowledge that in Christ we are a new creation. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord invite you to rise in body or in spirit. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace together. Our offertory song this morning is All People That on Earth Do Well in your red hymn book number 822.
Let us pray. Bless these gifts in our lives, O God, that we may share both food and faith with all people and all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in all times and in all places to thank and praise you, Creator of all. We praise you here, Amos lilies, Gary oaks, and cedar trees meet the wind of desolation, where the city and your creation intermingle. We give thanks for our place in the story of salvation. Our ancestors journeyed with you in creation and migration. They tended on the land. They displaced from the land and displaced others from their lands. They gave you in tents and cities, on mountains and by wells, in families and in dreams, in the fields, the wilderness prophets, and the songs of the earth. Therefore, together with angels and ancestors, eagle and bear, salmon and deer, pine and the nutka rose, we join our voices to praise the glory of your name. We give you thanks for Jesus, whose first bed was a feeding trough. He was baptized in the River Jordan, tested in the wilderness, traveled in fishing boats, and told parables of farmers and seeds, labor and wages, yeast and bread. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread, food of the poor, the work of field and hearth. He gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine, fruit of the land, gave thanks, and gave it to his companions, saying, Take, this is my blood which is shed for you. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Remembering Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, and awaiting his coming kingdom, we offer you this bread and cup. Creator, send your spirit on these gifts so that we know Jesus in broken bread. Unite us with all who gathered or scattered shale this sacred meal of justice and community. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus so that we may strive for justice and peace. Respect the dignity of every human being and safeguard the integrity of creation. Bring us with all your saints to the home you have promised where all will feast at your abundant table of welcome. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours now and forever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We break the bread of life, and that life is the life of the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to rise once more in body or in spirit. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the infinite peace to you, deep peace of the God of peace to you, and the blessing of the God of all creation, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us sing with joy our closing hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. <laughs> 